Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV. In this video, I want to address the question of whether Tesla has a secret sauce to their battery pack and battery range. But before I jump into that, I just want to say that if at any point during this video you find it valuable or interesting, please give it a share. Give it a like, give it a share, share it out on social media, Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I spent a great deal of time researching this to make sure that I'm giving you as accurate and balanced of an opinion as possible. Somewhere between 30 and 40 hours that I spent on this video alone. I used to do this a lot. Things get busy, life gets busy, but I wanna get into this a little bit more again, and I, I, I like it. I, I like giving that really deep analysis of my opinion of some of the data. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. So it's clear that Tesla does dominate EPA range. They work really hard to create the most efficient electric vehicles in the world. This is seen by these periodic tweaks in range, in efficiency of electric motors, in improvements in battery pack and energy density. As you'll learn in this video though, variables do matter. How fast electric vehicles are traveling, what headwind there is, what the ambient temperature is, elevation change, how strong was the regenerative braking? What agency or third party tested it? All of these things are extremely important. And more importantly, Jason from Engineering Explained talks about the science behind electric vehicles and their range and efficiency. Finally, we get to my favorite part, and that is road load. So this is extremely cool. Basically, when a car is going down the road, there are forces resisting that motion. So there's, of course, aerodynamic drag, which increases with speed squared. Uh, we have rolling resistance from the tires on the ground. And there's, of course, internal friction going on, whether it's a transmission or bearings, things like that. You've got internal friction occurring within that vehicle that is preventing it from moving forward. And you, of course, use those electric motors uh, to power through all of that. Now, companies have to provide an equation to the EPA that gives them what these resistive forces are. And the form of that equation is given as the force is equal to A, some constant, plus B, a constant multiplied by the vehicle's velocity, plus C, a constant multiplied by the vehicle's velocity squared. And so they have to provide this A, B, and C to the EPA so the EPA can draw out a plot of speed versus force. And so basically you can look at this equation and say, okay, if I'm traveling at 55 miles per hour, what force is resisting uh, the car? And using the equations that the manufacturers provide to you, which if you cheat on, there's a big fine. Uh, it's not something you wanna cheat on or lie about. Um, and it does get checked. So ultimately you have to provide that equation. The chatter that I've seen around Tesla bears is that Tesla's EPA range is overstated. Let's first though address how the EPA gets their estimates. Most automakers submit their test results to the EPA, which then get verified by the agency. There is a specific and stringent standard everyone follows, so it's not as if they can make up their own standards and make up their own range. Again, Engineering Explained does a fantastic job at making this simple for us to understand. Okay, so there's five categories here explaining why the Tesla has so much more range than the Porsche. So let's start off with EPA testing. So where does this Porsche Turbo's uh, 201 mile range actually come from? So for the EPA testing, of course, there are city tests that have to be done to get that city MPG rating, and there are highway tests that have to be done uh, to get that highway MPG rating. So this is a two cycle approach within the EPA testing uh, that all the manufacturers are going to do. And so what Porsche does is they put their car through these tests and they end up getting a range estimate out of these tests. So let's say that range estimate ends up being 287 miles. Well, here's the thing. These EPA tests are really easy to do really well on. It's not real world. Uh, it's not gonna give you what your actual range will be in the real world. And the EPA knows this, so you have to apply a correction factor. In this case, for this simple two cycle system, uh, the correction factor is 0.7. So let's say for example, Porsche runs their two cycle testing and their range ends up being 287 miles. Well, they multiply that by 0.7 and what do you know? They get a total range of 201 miles. Okay, so how does Tesla get their 402 miles of range? Well, they undergo that exact same two cycle city and highway testing to come up with their range estimate. And let's say that number ends up being 541 miles. 
Well, if you multiply that 541 miles by that 0.7 correction factor, you get a range of 379 miles. But of course, the Tesla range is 402 miles. It's not 379. So where does that 402 come from? Well, what the EPA allows you to do, instead of taking this uh, just standard 0.7% correction factor, you can actually come up with your own correction factor by undergoing three additional tests. So there's an acceleration test, a test that requires you using your air conditioning system, and a test where you're driving in the cold, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if you do all of these five cycles here, you divide that by your two cycle results, you get a correction factor. And for Tesla, that number ends up being in the range of 0.705 to 0.756. The higher the number, the better here, because it means you're taking less range off of your estimate. And so this is the range they end up falling in uh, throughout their product lineup, whether it's the Model 3, the Model Y, the Model S, etc. So for this Model S Long Range Plus, that correction factor ends up being 0.743, which when you multiply that by 541, gives you a total range of 402 miles. According to car and driver's Dave Vanderwerp, only Tesla and Audi use the five-cycle test for their EVs. No automaker has specifically stated why they test on a two or five cycle, so it's left to our imagination as to why. It likely comes down to time and cost for traditional automakers. Less testing means less expensive. I do wonder if non-traditional EV automakers like Lucid and Rivian and Bollinger will follow Tesla's lead in using the five cycle testing. What is specifically tested by the EPA? With the two cycle test, it includes city and highway. And with the city, the average speed is 21.2 miles per hour during this test over an 11 mile period with 23 stops and a lab temp of 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. With the highway test, the average speed is 48.3 miles per hour for 10.3 miles and no stops with a lab temp of 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. With the five cycle, it adds three more tests, the high speed, air conditioner test and cold temp test. With the high speeds, the average speed is only 48.4 miles per hour for eight miles, four stops, and a lab temp of 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. With the air conditioner test, the average speed is 21.2 miles per hour for 3.6 miles, five stops, and a lab temp of 95 degrees. With the cold temp test, the average miles per hour is 21.2, for 11.1 miles, 23 stops, and a lab temp of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Tesla bear Roger Barris wrote a very thorough article presenting his case as to why he thinks the EPA range for Tesla is overstated. If you'd like to get into the mind of a Tesla bear, I'd highly recommend this article as Roger has done a very thorough job at stating his case. He provides several use cases from journalists and publications where they did range tests, not only on Teslas, but other electric vehicles. I'll talk about those as well as some other ones that I found. Car and Driver tested the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, which is their fastest and most expensive variant as well as the Model S performance with the Raven update. The ambient temperature was 55 degrees Fahrenheit on a six and a half mile test track with no elevation change. The climate control was set to 72. There was an 11 mile per hour wind. The car started at a 100% state of charge and traveled a constant 75 miles per hour for 100 miles. They then extrapolated the range of the Taycan at 209 miles for an EPA range of 192, so it actually exceeded the EPA range. The Model S did 222 miles on an EPA of 348. The UK-based publication published their real-world range results. Here's how Tesla fared amongst the group. And also, it helps to keep in mind that the ambient temperature for testing in this particular instance was between 50 and 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And there were always two people in the car. The range tests are also done on a test track for consistency, but the variable speeds are not disclosed. At its most efficient, the Hyundai Kona traveled 259 miles on a 258 mile EPA. The Jaguar I-Pace, 253 on an EPA of 234. The Kia Nero came in at 253 on an EPA of 239. The Tesla Model 3 Performance came in at 239 miles on an EPA of 310. The Model X P100D came in at 233 on an EPA of 289. 
The Mercedes EQC came in at 208 miles on an EPA of 220. The Model S 75D came in at 204 on an EPA of 259. The Audi e-tron came in at 196 on an EPA of 204. The Model S Standard Range Plus came in at 181 miles on an EPA of 240. I want to take a quick moment to say thanks to today's video sponsor, Piedmont Lithium. They're publicly traded on the NASDAQ at PLL, and they have a spodumene hard rock mine in North Carolina. As you probably already heard, they've done an agreement with Tesla to be a spodumene hard rock provider to Tesla that then they'll process and turn into lithium and stick into batteries and into Tesla vehicles. I think this is pretty cool. And as we start to grow the electric vehicle base, as automakers start to expand their offering, this lithium will be in higher and higher demand. And so if you're an enthusiast or investor in the electric vehicle space, taking a look at Piedmont Lithium might be a good idea. Their website is piedmontlithium.com. Now, let's get back to the video. The next test was done by Next Move, which is a German-based car rental company, and they pitted the Model S Performance Raven Edition, Tesla's most powerful Model S, against the Taycan 4S, which is Porsche's least powerful and most efficient edition. They tested the two at a constant 75 miles per hour from a state of charge of 100% all the way down to zero. The Taycan traveled 234 miles on an EPA of 201. The Model S traveled 263 miles on an EPA of 348. The temperature of this test was not disclosed. However, from the looks of the video, it does look to be colder. Consumer Reports was the next one to do a range test between the Chevy Bolt in 2017. They don't state what the temperature was for the testing, but they do say the AC was turned off and mostly driven at 65 miles per hour until the battery ran out. The Bolt traveled 250 miles on an EPA of 238. They compare this range test to one that was done in 2016 with the Model S 75D and X90D. The S traveled 235 on an EPA of 259. The X traveled 230 on an EPA of 257. CarWow also did a very interesting test. They don't specify the specific route they took, only stating that they headed north out of London. However, they did say the ambient temperature was 47 degrees Fahrenheit. None of the vehicles were charged at 100%, but they all had more than 95%. The cars were set to their most efficient range setting, and the air conditioner was set to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The Model 3 came in at 270 on an EPA of 322. The EQC came in at 194 on 220, the LEAF 208 on 226, the Nero 255 on 235, the I-PACE 223 on 234, and the e-tron 205 on 204. I've also been doing some range testing on Tesla's variants with the Model S Long Range Plus with Raven Update a Model Y, a Model Y Performance with 21-inch wheels, and a Model Y Performance with 19-inch aero wheels. A big shout out to Eric for loaning me his Model Y Performance with arrows two times. These tests were all done on different days, but on the same stretch of highway traveling between 55 and 75 miles per hour. Ambient temps range from 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 88. I even went so far as to document the watt hours per mile every 30 minutes. The Model S Long Range Performance EPA range was 348, and the effective range that I got was 353 miles. The Model Y Long Range with 20-inch wheels EPA was 310, and I managed to travel an effective range of 273. The Y Long Range Performance with 19-inch wheels test 1, the EPA range was 291, I traveled 261. The second test on the same vehicle, I traveled 278 miles, and the Y long range performance with 21 inch wheels, the EPA range on that one was 291, and an effective range of 263. Comparing all EVs and seeing which one goes the furthest, like many publications have done, is partial, especially when pitting vehicles in different segments. Pairing a Chevy Bolt to a Model S is not a fair comparison, nor is a Model X to a Polestar 2. 
For this reason, Matt Joyce created an EV core efficiency table. His table divides battery size by range by weight to level the playing field. I really like this efficiency table because then it doesn't really matter which electric vehicle segment you're looking at. You can compare an SUV to a compact sedan, to a mid-sized sedan, to whatever you want. But this still doesn't address the question of why Teslas appear to consistently underperform their EPA range. I have two thoughts on this. It's clear that EPA estimates are not realistic and don't reflect the way Americans drive. This is because the average city cycle speed is 21.2 miles per hour, highway cycle is 48.2, and the high speed cycle is 48.4. I don't know anyone who drives under 50 miles per hour on the highway. It is my opinion that Tesla studies to pass the test regarding EPA estimates knowing that most Americans don't just drive 40 miles per hour like the EPA range tests for. When publications test the real world range by driving at a constant 75 miles per hour, this is also not realistic. Most owners do not do this unless they're on a road trip. And even when owners are driving at a constant 75 miles per hour. The Tesla software does a phenomenal job at positioning fast charging stations every 150 to 200 miles or so on the highway. What I think would be more valuable for American consumers is if the EPA offered three range estimates, one for the city, one for the highway, and one for road trips. The EPA already collects data on city and highway ranges. Adding a third would address those who do travel 75 miles per hour for 300 plus miles at a time. My other thought is every EV is optimized for something different based on the design of the exterior as well as the interior. When Eric and I did the hypermile of the Model 3 several years ago, we traveled 25 miles per hour for 36 hours, and we were able to stretch the 310 mile range to 607 miles. It's my opinion that Tesla typically does very well between 50 and 60 miles per hour. The Porsche Taycan does far better at highway speeds than city speeds. This becomes extremely clear when you take a look at the EPA's data on city range and highway range. The Taycan's highway range does exceed the EPA range by three miles. However, it is one of the lowest when it comes to city range. But when you compare that to all of Tesla's models, it is just the reverse. The highway range underperforms in comparison to the Taycan, but the city range far exceeds in most cases. So does Tesla have a secret sauce with EV battery range? The answer is yes when I consider how constant they are increasing their range on their vehicles through minor tweaks in battery chemistry, battery management, electric motor efficiency, and heat pumps. As far as Tesla Bear Roger Barris article, I think he was asking the wrong question. He should have asked which car has the best range at a constant highway speed of 75 miles per hour. The answer is obviously the Porsche Taycan. Tesla's secret sauce will not be found in testing a vehicle at 75 miles per hour on the highway nonstop. It's not going to be found in looking alone at energy density of batteries or miles per kilowatt hour or total EPA range. It'll be found in looking at the overall total package. Even if Tesla performs 15% below their EPA estimates, each time Tesla updates their range, it still improves. As for now, it appears that Tesla still leads the pack when considering all of these things. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you a Tesla owner? And how do you feel about the EPA range versus what you actually get? And if you're not a Tesla owner but in the market, I'd love to hear your opinion. If the Teslas do 15% less than EPA range, is that a deal breaker for you? Or when you look at the total package, is it enough to convince you to buy a Tesla over something else? Sound off in the comments down below. This is Sean Mitchell. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch everyone on the next video.